order to get things done, we're going to use the debate to wrap in order to time this debate. Um, there will be a bell something down now. I hope that you can hear that. Are there any questions before we start? If not, we invite the first speaker, uh, the Prime Minister, to open the debate on the motion to stand in the name of the Because, uh, because 
Okay, first thing, we will talk why it is physically impossible. Well, women will decide uh, when women will... Okay, so how it will probably happen for you in, in a woman's life? She will probably... Find, uh, first, first, she will go to a good... Uh, good uh, she will probably try to, to make it to the best company possible. Then she will decide to have children because, okay, narrative taught, uh, the, all of these narratives tell me that I need to have children and this are, and this. Uh, women who can't have it all said me that it wouldn't harm my career if I would uh, uh, work enough. Well, but we can say that in real world, when you when you have children, you also have obligations between in front of this uh, uh, in front of these children. You need to take care of them. Care of them. You need at least to have a pregnancy, a pregnancy leave. You need to like uh, you need to go like. Um, <coughs> You need to leave your work earlier to pick up your children from from uh, from school. You need to cook for them. You need to wash their clothes. You need to take care of them as as much as often as possible. And this is uh, uh, and doing that at the same time as working like a full a full time job. So you can actually go by uh, go up with this so, uh, career ladder is is physically impossible because you can't be at two places at the same time. Yes. If there is no narrative of this one, oh, we can have it all. What in the alternative world? What yeah. kind of narrative? Okay, I'll talk okay, about it. Yeah. And, uh, okay, and even if, okay, I'll talk about it later. Okay, and even if women would decide to do, to try, uh, uh, even if women will balance this, this thing as, as for some time, it will be extremely menta mentally tiring because she would need to think about 10 times at the same time, uh, 10 things at the same time. She would need to think about her family, uh, when her children, if they're well, well fed, if they're, if they're doing fine, and about her work if her clients are, uh, are uh, satisfied with her. And it is uh, like this, and because of it, women will uh, and okay. And why it, why these two things are bad? Okay, firstly, women will struggle. Uh, women will struggle, and they it, it, uh, because they can't do. As I said, it, it's one person that can't do two things at the same time. And uh, because of it, they will think that they are inferior, that they don't uh, try hard enough, that they are worse than these women in television who are already who, who can do everything. Well, who can balance everything, and because of it, um, they will um, it, because of it, they will feel unhappy. They will think, okay, I'm bad, or I'm bad wife, I, or I'm, I'm bad person, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to have children. I'm not good enough to have this work, and that will make them, uh, and they will that will stress them. That might even for them into depression because they think, okay, it's good to have been bad. Uh, 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 <coughs> and secondly, we believe that it will uh, add up to the gender of the pay gap because. Women would have to put up, like after they after women will start struggling after uh, uh, after when they realize that they need to to actually give much more to their family they would probably have to leave their work or have much less opportunity like, uh, much less work hours and, and like get a smaller pay, uh, pay because you ca you can't reverse your family you already have these children you can you can't just give like, you just you can't just forget about them and because of it they would pro they and but while you can sacrifice your job, so this woman will believe that they should sacrifice this job, and because of it, uh, and, and because of it, we, uh, we will still be adding up to the gender gap. Because this woman, they will, uh, they will get less work hours, they will get less pay, and they will, they, <coughs> they can give less uh, impact to the world uh, with their money. Okay, and we believe that in an alternative world, women would choose what is more suitable for them, and after they make this choice, they would be, they would still happy about it because uh, they would feel happy about it because it wouldn't be uh, a pressure to do everything at the same time. I thank the speaker for those fine remarks, and I invite the leader of the Shinchen to invite for all here. here. Who we should be debating about and how does the narrative work after that a few of the director's expectations 
and then I'll explain to you what is the likely contrafactual that will happen in case we don't have this narrative, and why this contrafactual is by far worse for women in any case. Okay? So, let's first of all, let us talk a little bit about who we should be talking about. We believe that we are not locked into the Western states because many developing countries do have the same debate about this same thing. Like, for example, India, Malaysia, Kazakhstan, all of those countries, they do have different narratives that are conflicting. They have gender roles, they have this type of stereotype, they do have feminist societies, they do have universities that do spread some liberal ideas, and there is a big clash between those narratives. So it is pretty relevant to motion, but also must understand that impact is incomparably bigger for oppressed women when you are able to push some kind of a narrative like that. For them, because most probably those people in those extremely liberal countries in which you are pretty free are already educated enough about their possibilities, they do have a lot of different role models, and so their ability to choose more or less is uh, pretty big and does not really depend on those narratives. But lastly, we believe that there are conservative groups even in those countries that uh, the opening I was talking about. So in the US you have, for example, poor people, religious people, you have non-integrated minority groups in Europe, etc. All of those people are extremely important. We're going to focus more on them because they suffer by far more, right? So, uh, what they are talking about is the fact that, well, it's impossible, you will not be able to choose correctly, right? You're going to feel inferior, etc. We do not believe that, because we do not believe that this narrative is going to work in a way that it will say, oh, look, it's so easy, no problems, have women, have or ha have children, have work, etc. Realistically, what else is going to be? Probably it's going to be personal accounts of struggles that this woman faced, and explanations on how say, you can avoid those struggles, or how you can manage all things together. It's going to be messages that showcase support, showcase you that you can persevere through those things, not aggressive remarks that say that unless you do that, you're a loser. And why realistically it will be this way? Because in most societies, such messages are spread by feminist groups, right? Not just by random people. And those feminist groups have the, uh, a very clear understanding of what struggles do women have when they are a mother, but also when they live in some kind of oppressed society, and therefore they will try to do their best in order to do a work that will not oppress those women even more by showcasing them their inferiority, they'll try their best probably to frame them in the way that we're talking about, right? And all these things about impossibility, you have to take care of all those things and etc. Look, it's not really true that women cannot work and, you know, uh, have children together. There are many women, like billions of women in the world that do manage those things together. It's not that problematic. We're going to explain why exactly those things are going to be fine, right? Uh, okay, so let's as first uh, of all understand what's going to be the contrafactual, probably, right? We believe that probably there will not be any narrative at all in society, but the narrative will probably be something like choose what you want, right? Or choose the career or something like that, something that will narrow you, ch your choices down or like try to give this broad agenda that will capture error. But we believe both of those possible narratives are by far worse, right? Because of the fact that we're focusing on those conservative societies, because they're the most oppressed ones, uh, we believe that it's going to be more problematic. Why? Because what a narrative such as choose what you want, the choice is likely for those women to be extremely biased, right? Because A, those women are indoctrinated by the society that's extremely uh, patriarchal into those gender roles, right? Into those biological roles that they have to fulfill. And therefore, if they have to choose one thing to do, is they are by far more likely to choose to be a mother, and this might be problematic for them because they do not have free rational choice in that case because of this indoctrination and because this narrative does not fight your inability to do anything else, but also because it's probably problematic for you to be a mother for economic reasons, which I'm going to explain later. Second of all, we believe that there's extreme difficulty for you to challenge the beliefs of others, right? Because probably if you live in this oppressive society and you want to go and just do a career, uh, it's unlikely that you're going to see much support from your husband, for example, or from your family, from your father, etc., because they believe that you have those. A biological, uh, you know, special capabilities and such, therefore you have to go and have children and such, and it's by far harder for you again to break from those narratives. And there's also for yourself, third of all, fear of economic struggles, you know, all of those problems, you don't necessarily know how you're going to only get by without uh, support from your family and such, but if you do both of those things, we believe on the comparative, it is by far better for you, right? Because if you as a woman have both children and you both work, you do not have the, all of that pressure ramping up on you, that you are just unable to go to work and the only option for you is really to have children, you are more likely to be more free for you 
to choose, like, am I going to only have children or am I going to work as well? Because it was understand, right? This narrative will not be like, you should work and you should have children and the, any, everyone who doesn't do that is a loser. It will just tell you, right? You can choose, you know, to do both things. Maybe you, you can do those things. It doesn't mean you should do those things. And I believe more women on the coverage on our side are likely to cho choose to have both of those things and try to ma manage them together. And therefore, that means that they are more likely to be accepted by their families, by their, by their men, etc. And therefore, accepted by themselves, which is a very good thing. What benefits would you get from that directly? Well, we understand that first of all, those women obviously still work, right? They still get some cash, they still get some experience, they get some kind of career promotions anyway, even if they do not work necessarily as much as men, but we believe that there will be a couple of different groups, right? Some women will decide that they'll be a bit more laid back on work and therefore care a little bit more about their children and work on a casual way, which will still grant them a lot of financial independence anyway, right? Because of the fact that they still earn money, they can still save up anyway, especially Especially if they rely mostly on their husband for family issues, etc., which will still give more events. But we would also, some women will decide to push harder, right, because they feel the capability, so because they're naturally talented for anything else, and of course they're going to probably go to, and do some breakthroughs, you know, go to career advancement, because usually they're posts on the career, even if they do have some certain prejudices. If they'll see that someone is performing very well, they'll have direct financial incentives to promote them, etc. Why is that important? Well, obviously it's important for all of those women because it's the fact that it makes them more free, which means, for example, that they may have a divorce without fearing for the fact that they will not be able to get any job because not having any experience or not having any money to get by in the first month before they got a job, they become more free in those conservative sites because there's a lot of for example, abusive husbands because you don't have any kind of family culture inside them. It's extremely important to them. But second of all, because we break up the, a lot of different stereotypes that happen, you know, because when you see that women are actually capable of performing very well on jobs, some women are getting promoted, etc., you not only the bosses, but also co-workers of those women will see that actually women are capable of doing all of those things, and therefore it's less likely that later on in their life they're going to try and restrict their daughters, for example, from getting some kind of education, because they'll actually believe, because they are not inherently repressive to women, but they just believe them to be inferior, right? And when this child views child, it's by far likely that this kind of narrative is going to change. Uh, we believe it happens more on our side, only on our side. Essentially, it is possible, and therefore we're very proud of it. I thank the speaker for those fine remarks, and I invite the Deputy Prime Minister to continue the debates for the OG here. here. <coughs> Today, opening our opening position states that there are, <coughs> so we should include uh, we should include the women from developing countries, and, and we should we should prioritize them over uh, women in developed in developed countries because they always have uh, 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 role models. We believe that okay be, because this narrative of women can have it all is so attractive for most of the women because well you can have it all you can be happy as uh, as happy as possible in, in this world because of it women. And even women in developing in developed countries will choose it over everything, uh, every other gen, every other role model that you talk about. So in this matter, they are, they are like they can <coughs> they are uh, as effective by the standard as other women might, uh, uh, and like uh, as strong as it can be. And also, we can believe that the women in developing countries, well. Uh, <coughs> Uh, well, pro yes, probably in countries that are mid like in the middle of uh, gender roles, they still can like where like for like, where they can go to work and like uh, they still can do whatever they want 
in their lives. Uh, but uh, say, but I, today I'm talking. Uh, I'm saying that we should exclude women from uh, countries like Iraq, uh, Iran, Iraq, because these these women uh, these women don't have a choice at all. Women that women from Palestine are not are the same, in this situation are the same as the women in developed countries that I talked previously about. Okay. Um, and you say that billions of women actually balance it uh, in now today. Actually, well, we say that we have seen gender pay gap because it is caused by we say, uh, say women in, in the most of the world, these women are not balancing both successful uh, life, with, uh, life at home and successful life at work. Actually, they, they only mainly do the, uh, like a mediocre or less or worse than mediocre life at work and successful life at, at, at home. That's what happened to most of them because they, they, uh, they spend much less amount of time at work. They, try, try, they, they, like, at, they start, for example, if, uh, they do their actual work on, at night after they will send their own children to, to sleep and they can't do anything with it because they can't they simply can't work while their children are awake and they uh, because of it um, their their status at work is actually suffering and they can't do anything about it because the children you, you can't just reverse them now. And uh, okay and you uh, you say that so okay so you say uh, I'm what I'm talking to the, to the about I say that because this narrative is a uh, if this narrative didn't exist in in, in our world that we like we, it would be better for women because I say, I say as you said yourself women would have to make a choice between working uh, either working successfully or having children successfully they still can for example have children successfully and understand that they will. They will have to sacrifice their like uh, their uh, like, salaries. They might be like one and a half times smaller than they would have been if they went to the work path instead. And we believe that that this idea of uh, sacrificing job uh, but still working and get, having some payment is doesn't lie in the narrative of women can have a dog because women can have a dog implies that we need to that women can have can be successful in everything. Okay, and um, so today we say. Yes. Okay. Why on your side is the house those women will blindly follow that narrative and sacrifice everything that they want just upon that narrative? Okay. Um, this is, um, okay. We believe that this is a world without this narrative. We already have a resistance against traditional gender roles. We already have a lot of feminist communities that say you, sh you don't have to work, uh, you don't have to stay at home, you actually can uh, choose you actually can choose to work instead of having children. You still can be alone all of your life or having only, only your husband without your children. That narrative is supported. That narrative is, even if it is considered to be harsh, uh, 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 when women, and women can get support from other people who are actually supporting this narrative. And we believe that in, the, in our world, women, and like in your in world with this narrative, women see the narrative women can have though, as more attractive and they go for it. Because they say, okay, I don't have to uh, sacrifice anything. I can't have it all. I don't, uh, I, uh, and I will not get any pressure from society for not having any children. They choose an easy part that, that then turns out bad for them because they can't have it all. Because they have to choose children over work because they can't do anything with their children. They can't just make their children, own children disappear after they started, after they had them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's unlikely that women, if they struggle as much as OG says, will continue to work. They can still have an option just to have children and sit at home if they see so much trouble, but they'll at least try and have a rational choice when they do that. Okay, and the problem is that women will do that. The women have, in all the world would have preferred okay. to stay in at work instead of having three, instead of having two, three children, would have probably, uh, like, or would have uh, maybe only like one children, or would have, uh, like, and, or, or would have spent much more time at work. They, in your world, now choo will choose to have children, and they will be more unhappy because in, in your world, they get less paid because they can't spend a lot of, uh, all of their time at work. They can't, uh, from, uh, they can't uh, spend as much time as, as, as their co-workers, as male co-workers at home, and because of it, they will get less promoted, they will get le less paid, um, with less, uh, like, smaller salaries, they can't do anything with it, and now they can't do anything with it. In, my, in our world, they wouldn't have 
that we say we have chosen the harsh part of our way of prioritizing work of not deciding to be successful in children's life, but as this one, they would get support from as the family's community. They would have decided to okay, I can do what I, I <coughs> they would have decided that okay, uh, uh, I will go to buy harsh parts, but I will, I will get what I want with work. I will be able to buy whatever I want. I will be able to go with whatever wherever I want. And they would, uh, and they would understand, but they would accept this choice because it, it, they made it them, uh, themselves. Instead, in your world, they, uh, they, they still made this choice, but they failed in this, with their, their choice. It's like uh, they, they decided to have it all, and they failed, and they will feel bad about failing it. And today, in your world, because of them, uh, uh, they, they will still feel depressed, as I said in, in previously. And also, we will see uh, these women. It will uh, add up to the gender pay gap because now women who would have actually worked and gotten better salaries, they have to sit at home uh, or spend more time at home and have less salaries. And because of it, and because they have to spend so much time with their children, they can they can't be as politically active as they would have been in our world. They can't spend their time on on their community. They can't spend time. To like maybe marching for a warrant or so she can go win a presidency. No, they have to sit at home with their children. They have to make this change because they can't reverse anything. And we believe that because of it, in the long run, women can't change much in their policy. Women can't devote their money. Women can't spend more money on from helping or with policies that support women. Women can't do whatever they want. It's I thank the speaker for his final remarks and I invite the leader of the to continue the debate. We're here. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Even if that's not true, you have far more freedom. We think that on the comparative, 
we say that more women are likely, like without that uh, that narrative, more women are actually who don't want to stay at home will stay at home, and that is very good, like very bad lies. So what do we say? Uh, like why you you achieve more success in this? If that explains you why in the counterfactual women do not have completely free choice. Why these women will have less meaningful lives? Because uh, like there is no resistance and they will just simply uh, like stay at home. I add to that. Uh, like uh, uh, that, at the point in which you do not challenge directly the structures of the economy and the structures of the way the society thinks that these societies feel as as important, you are more like uh, uh, like you are more likely to get structural changes. What do we mean? On their side of the house, it is likely that they will like push for things like free choice, and they will advocate for things like paternity leave. They'll advocate for things like more education. What does that mean? It means that because these structures are far bigger than the feminist movements that are actually supporting them, it, it things that are ingrained in the culture for hundreds of years, and because of the values of family that are propagated through education from early childhood, they are like the, something that the majority feels. We, we feel that you, you will feel a resistance to the kinds of changes on their side. What does that mean? It means that, like, it means that you have conservative people challenging notion and saying that women are going to universities and now they are not raising children. Women are going, uh, 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 and, and now these children are growing up as someone who are uh, like doing crime. And women, like this feminist movement, wants to achieve something like a state in which no one cares about children, and that is something that is really bad. You give a lot of uh, like ammo, uh, ammunition to this conservative group to actually mobilize a support against these kinds of changes. Secondly, it means that men feel threatened because of the ways in which their power gets charged. I, as men, want like, my identity and my power, like, uh, uh, my identity depends on the power that I have in the family and the fact that I, I want to be the one who brings money into the family. It's something that is like something that I raise with. And at the point in which you challenge the feminist movement to those doctrines and you say women should have choice, meaning that you want to challenge the norms that men are actually raising their children, you have far more resistance. On the comparison, because you say women can have it all, and then women will still, like, more likely be in the household and be in the, uh, like, you are, like, very less likely to actually face resistance to the kinds of issues. It means more policies like university education for women. It means more quotas for women to, to higher education. It means that in the long term, more women get access to the kinds of things that they want to achieve to, to have, like, to have the, the precursors to, to great careers. What, like, so, on the comparative, you have far better situation for women in terms of access to the kinds of goods and the choices that they have. Second, why in the long term women are likely to be successful? We think that, yes, it's probably true that in some corporations, such like women will lose out to competitions, but we think in many areas of life, women are actually like given some access to these education, things that I talked about in my last point, it's, they are likely to achieve success in those cases. Things like things like creative work, in things where they can bring unique insight that women have uh, faced in like things like writing, uh, uh, writing. Secondly, it's uh, they, 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 like there are also a lot of works that are compatible with basic domestic duties. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, and, 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 and a lot of women can focus uh, on that. And even like doing third things, doing things like startups that cater to unique women's uh, preferences and uh, like that men would other otherwise have not found, and uh, means that they, they are more likely to achieve success than on the comparison. And, and, and lastly, feminist movement are likely to be actually giving attention to successful women in those scenarios. Why is that massively important? We think that at the point in which you have these role models in, on our side of the house, you have a, a lot of inspiration for more young women to actually free to choose, uh, choose uh, and opt in into working rather than staying at home. It secondly it directly challenges the cultural notions that exist around gender and, uh, and, and biological purpose of, uh, of women. Why is that like massively important? Because we think we can't achieve on our side of the house in the long term transition like through, through the, the, the notion that women can have it all, we are far more likely to transition into like make other discourses such as women kind of like have choice on choosing what they want to in the long term, in the future, at the point in which those role models and, uh, and ideas that women are not suitable for different kinds of work gets directly challenged and destroyed. You think that uh, uh, like, uh, like 
the, the number of women on our side of the house that get access to education and in the long term the number of women that actually get genuinely free that happens far faster on our side of the house. On their side of the house it may not happen at all because you face huge backlash from the society or that happens extremely slowly that women suffer all these years prior to <coughs> Fine remarks, and I invite the member of government to open the second half of the year. We say that the problem of the discrimination in super conservative countries is not about marriages or feministic movements. They do not read everyday feminism, they don't care about the interview of Michelle Obama. The reason for discrimination is super structural. Number one, it is a religion that told you in the Islam that women have less position and less important rather than men. Second of all, this culture that conservative role models that, uh, that force women to sit with children and etc. Three, it is lack of education on people that they do not understand why some crucial rights is important for women. Uh, Fourthly, because the anti-West rhetoric, especially due to colonialism, due to a lot of force, etc. And lastly, due to culture of masculinity that say that men have to work and not women. Therefore, in both sides of the house, despite the agenda of the feministic movement in those countries, people in those states will not change their opinion. Because, okay, they will see maybe the interview of Michelle Obama, and however they value more their strong religion and cultural identity. Therefore, is, is in both sides of the house, it is a horrible situation in the super conservative regime. Therefore, it is more about the liberal states, because, because it is it is unjust when opposition said that women in liberal states is good. No, there are a lot of problems with the sexual harassment, there are a lot of problems with the wage gap, there are a lot of uh, problems with the lack of choice uh, of young women, and, and here the majority of people in the liberal states is more likely to listen to agenda, and therefore those narratives are more likely to be effective and in those states. But even if the case it is true, we say the changes is bring not by those narratives, Rather, by saying that women also can be a career, can be good at career, can be good at banking, is not the same with the narrative that women can have it all. Because we just can't say that women have different role models, as the third wave of feminism already told you. Therefore, they never explain why uh, those narrative, uh, due to those narratives, women will uh, get more rights. First of all, in terms of our extension, we say that the counterfactual that we have to protect it is the third wave of feminism, uh, which says that women can choose career or can be great wife or can be great mother. Therefore, there is a huge variety of role models that, exi uh, that exist in, in our side of the house, but do not try to have all of that models. In practice, it works when women choose to prefer career in banking, they can do it, uh, can have only career, but if they would uh, want to have a family, they can have a birth of children, but still prefer work, and children would raised by nurse and by uh, his, uh, her relatives. Number two, how this narrative creates the perception of women in the liberal states in the back way. We say that even if the liberal states, women still depend on the other stakeholders. Number one, they still depend uh, on men, because in the majority of liberal states, men still have huge influence for women in family relationships, in the workplaces, and etc. Number two, they depend for especially young women depends on parents and their relatives because they directly affect your choice, affect your preferences and your personalities. In their side, women can have all, and those stakeholders 
uh, saw it on, on TV, read interviews and etc. and believe in this rhetoric. Therefore, it's, it's more likely that the, in their perception, the, the great role model for women is to have all and be good mother and also be good consultant. Which group of people this narrative will be, this uh, perception will affect? We say many women in status quo prefers to stay at home uh, because they love children, because they say that it is their happiness, or other uh, groups of women prefer career because they feel passion with their work and etc. We say that those women will be, uh, will be affected in the bad way. How it affects women? Three impacts here. Number one, we say husband of these families is more likely to say that you should have all because uh, because he saw this interview and he saw all of these role models on on their uh, Western media and what? therefore it is great for you. It is great for you to not only sit sit, sit at home. It's also great for you to find a job, even if part time job, uh, and then also be a good uh, volunteer and etc. Therefore, they are more likely to persuade their, their wives that it is a really great model for them. Number two, parents, it's also important stakeholder here because they still affect women's choice, especially when they are young, because they depend on the, uh, the financial depend on their parents. And therefore, parents also can say that uh, uh, my daughter it is, it is better for you to have it all, it's much better for you to be a great consultant and also uh, find a great man and create a family and etc. And lastly, in terms of uh, HR and CEO uh, perception, we say the majority of these men still in liberal states and therefore they are more likely to fear that women will won't have it all and when he, when he sees uh, the candidate as a woman, he more likely to believe that in some part of his her career, this woman more likely to want to have children because the many narratives told about it, and therefore those CEOs and HRs less likely to give offer for them or promote them for the crucial positions. Why? Because because in comparison with men, it is it is unstable for them to uh, to hire those women, even if in the big picture it seems like the liberal state is good in terms of women rights. We have to understand there is a still indirect sexism that, that works in the dialects, that works in the family relations, that works in the workplaces, which cannot, which cannot monitor here. In terms of the impact, number one, two, uh, two possible scenarios. If women try to have it all and take them at their best, those women will be successful. We say no matter what results would be, even if you are successful, but you prefer uh, to spend the whole day with your children, but you just can do it because you have to work in at least uh, four and five year, five uh, hours per day. We say it is still horrible for their happiness because they do not spend their time as they want. Or if you prefer to be a good employee, you cannot just you cannot spend the whole uh, time at the office because you have to uh, have a work. If if they will not go to the uh, those will not follow this role model, we say they perceive her as a not great, not happy woman. It is important because relationships with people are crucial because it determines our happiness and our uh, in the majority of cases. In comparison, we say if woman prefers uh, to be a mother, it is okay for all stakeholders. It is okay for parents that my daughter will stay at home and will be the great mother. It is okay for husband to say that if it is really your choice, it is much better for you to stay at home. If uh, those women prefer to, to, to be great at career, at banking, etc., it's also completely fine. You don't have any obligation to have a work and therefore less pressure for women and therefore more choices and more freedom grants. Of this narrative on men. Problem 
in modern society and in case of government that in majority of modern families as conservative as liberal there is huge burden on men uh, on men to be only one person who earn money this great in history when gender roles uh, were based women sit at home and with children and men working from uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. in status quo this narrative is destructive uh, first huge competition and rapid changes of the labor market that disenfranchise a lot of workers. People from middle and poor class, poor class have a big chance to lose jobs because of automatization or huge competition. And economy rules of market encourage them to work on low paid jobs uh, or on very difficult and hazardous jobs. Secondly, families are still created. Conservative or religion, uh, religious customs that encourage people on, uh, on, er uh, on early marriages and pregnancy. Parents uh, beg their children to born grandson and granddaughters. Also, unexpected pregnancy still is a problem of the 21st century. People don't use condoms, think that there are conservative methods that uh, will help escape pregnancy, but it doesn't work efficiently. Narrative that aborts harm a woman body, a woman body pushes young parents to born uh, these children even if they don't want these children. And as a result, a lot of men without Finnish education should leave colleges and go to earn money on factory because powers are very expensive. As a result, all dreams of boy about successful life are smashed. Uh, no, sorry. And impacts of this problem in, uh, in, in, start, uh, in case of government. Families that live in not satisfactory conditions, such as small square of apartments or junk food that harms health. Also, constant pressure on men from bosses on work, preferences and features of life of his child, for example, that, uh, that created by capitalistic idea of new iPhone or new, a new toy. Constant understanding that men can lose job or kill accidentally, that becomes fear of the whole family. Domestic problems and misunderstandings lead to big trauma and shock for men and impossibility to find time to save relationships, create things mm, to, uh, to save relationships, relationships, create things in head of husband that he is loser. By case of post-Soviet countries, when alcoholism from men population is more than 40 percent, we understand that men prefer not to go to psychologists and solve these problems, but drink alcohol or, or use drugs that increase chances of health, uh, heart attacks or death by accident because of your drunk or by drugs. And, no, sorry, that makes uh, as a result uh, Oh, oh, it makes from life a widow without sources to earn money, and even if it's a big problem, men still feel horned that it's normal life because they see no alternatives in case of government when there is there is no such uh, such narratives that we are talking about. How this solution are provided by this narrative? No, sorry. All the people agree that this narrative sp uh, spread not only by feminists but also by media and pop culture mm, uh, and pop culture. People of all gender and social class perceive this narrative directly or indirectly through fan theaters of media or, not, or by news or by different advertisement that is, that is perceived like a native information in their head and even if they don't watch any pop culture, they also have information that this narrative is uh, still existed. And uh, uh, what exactly is that they perceive? It's, uh, it's a more different explanation from opening opposition. Idea that women can work, uh, can work and also achieve success in career without harming relations in your family, without harming, um, without harming your relation with, uh, with your child or children. In comparison, without marriage, people have no sources of this idea. And role models in face of anti Merkel don't so common to change opinion, uh, don't so common, uh, not so popular, and not so uh, very often in advertisement and in, in pop culture. Uh, to change opinion. Moreover, quantity of role models without narratives doesn't propose story of success in small details, such as you, um, even if you have a problem with your children, uh, and um, you can uh, you can spend your um, you can spend some money on a special man or special person who can sit with your baby, and as it proposed by pop, um, as it proposed by pop culture in different scenarios that. Um, that describe this scenario when women can achieve a big success in family and in uh, in career. Uh, no, sorry. Moreover, it encouraged to think poor and middle classes that main actors of that. Moreover, it encouraged to think poor and middle classes that main uh, actors of our case. And uh, what uh, in our case, these actors 
uh, this man of all ages understand narratives that women also can walk, and it's normally that, uh, and it's normally, uh, and, and it's normal. And if men would struggle with trap of unexpected pregnancy or early marriage, his calculus will change from idea that I'm only one who can earn money, even if it's difficult to me, to idea that I can work and my wife can work, and it will influence positively on our family uh, and in our relationships. Moreover, women also covered by this narrative, and they will try to propose the uh, will try to propose their help in financial affairs of this family. No, sorry, uh, impacts. Uh, crucial impact that are uh, proposed only by uh, opposition side. Firstly, more women should have access to jobs that in cooperative stopped by husband is like a rebuttal, but more, more unique impacts from the opposition is first, more capital in families that can allow more comfort, more comfort conditions and more qualified food and services such as psychologists or entertainment that influence on relax of family and self-satisfaction of husband or wife. No, sorry. Uh, it leads to less alcoholism, less heart attack because of alcoholism. <laughs> alcoholism. Okay. Uh, and, and certainly, uh, we understand if it's less chances to heart attack, less chances to death of husband who are only one person who earn money. It, uh, it creates less chances for wife to become a widow without uh, without sources of earning money. And we understand that this uh, in this case of scenario is, is uh, very bad. Nobody will argue about this. And why we don't reverse this narrative? Because this narrative is spreading and cover more and more families that struggle from destructive narrative that only men must earn money. And we have big probability that microclimate of families that will accept this narrative will be better. People and especially men will feel how their lives is changed in a better way, how they become more relaxed, and then and they will share this narrative as a tool of a good life among friends and colleagues. Uh, that suffer from over exploitation of husband, and it means that more people will feel pleasure from destroying things of gender inequality. And on, in only our case, we explain how our inbox of open opposition will be existed in reality. And because of that, I'm proud to oppose. Thank you. Too much power, they will never accept uh, those uh, those changes of minds. This is to say that we need to understand that their comparative group, uh, comparative groups here, uh, group here as well. Firstly, we need to understand what's uh, the specification of our of, of our extension here and why even those uh, uh, those men uh, on, on which only opposing opposition is talking about is a comparative here as well as as well as women. Because every single team in this room bases their arguments and bases the importance of their arguments upon the stereotypes which appear uh, which appear about gender roles of people, etc. That's to say that if this group of people is suffering as well as my partner is already explained to you, they are also a comparative here. But secondly, my partner brilliantly explained why why those no thank you, why sufferings of those uh, of those men directly affect on sufferings of women into their houses, into their homes, uh, into their homes, etc. It's extremely important because the majority of the days, the majority of your free time you are spending at home with these people, and it's extremely important for you, uh, for you uh, uh, as women and as a, as his wife as well. Secondly, upon the framing of this debate, what no thank you? We need to understand that previous three, ta uh, previous three tables have kind of, kind of, kind of messy specification of frame of framing this debate. But what do we have? But what do we accept? We accept that, uh, the uh, we accept that the framing which government bench uh, settles, settles here upon the uh, target group of this motion is the most fair in this debate. No, thank you. Why? Because the only alternative frame here about uh, about. Uh, 
uh, about, about uh, basis of families, groups, etc. Uh, et, et, et from open and opposition doesn't uh, mutually exclusive with, with this framing. What, what, the, what do I mean? I mean that we are mostly playing about okay liberal liberal countries where those narratives are spread not only on on feministic media, otherwise it wouldn't have uh, changed something in, the, in this debate. No, thank you, because those who are reading fe feminist media, those who are uh, who are reading everyday feminists, etc., are the less important group in this debate because they are already aware here because they already have uh, the narrative of choices here uh, uh, of, cho of choices here. What uh, and what do we need to understand? Conservative pe conservative people are living in a liberal countries. No, thank you. I will take you on a few minutes. Please don't stand. It's in front. Okay. Uh, uh, but uh, what do we need to understand here is that uh, those, uh, those people, when closing up, uh, government says that they will not uh, want to go to work, etc. Et, et uh, they are flourishing the facts. It doesn't true. Why? Because we are living in, uh, because we are living in a uh, uh, capitalistic society where everyone wants to, wants to gain money, etc. That is to say, no matter whether this narrative exists or not, women in both worlds will, uh, uh, will, will want to go for a job. And, that's, uh, and here, is the unique contribution of closing opposition in this debate when we are talking uh, when we are talking to how we do overcome the most important issue of those even conservative women in, the, in this debate who are born, uh, who extremely want to go go for a job but couldn't but couldn't afford it here on on the uh, on the uh, uh, on, on the law of uh, of, gov of government danger. What do we need to understand and what is the exclusiveness of this narrative and its direct comparison with closing government? When they propose us their, alter their alternatives about free choice and uh, etc., why is the only why it's the only way to persuade the, uh, those those men? Because what do we need uh, what do we need to understand is one undeniable fact in a capitalistic society those men are, su are suffering. That's to say that where uh, that's when, why we differ on, uh, from open opposition when they just simply uh, talk us about first outside narratives that, uh, and outside resistance from colleagues etc., which is less important things in, in this debate because from outside not in the family it's a le it's a less uh, possible resistance in even in, uh, in status quo. Why? Because we have a lot of affirmative action because we have a lot of policies which propose women on the on the job etc the most important source of resistance here is a home is those uh, is those tyrants not on the job but on the one but on your key but on your own kitchen and in your own bed that's to say that's what why our contribution is the most important here why because nevertheless that they explain that they explain us that oh, because it doesn't go against your patriarchal uh, pat patriarchal soul as, uh, uh, as 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 some as some person you will uh, you can accept it we bring you why we would accept it. Because it's extremely hard to you as men in status quo to follow the capitalistic narratives, to follow this. That's to say that on our side of the house, those impacts are most the most achievable in this debate. But what do we need to understand? But what do we need to understand as well is that when, uh, when opening government is talking and about the efficiency of this narrative and about its, uh, its effect on society, opening government flourishing the facts here when they're talking as if we will blindly follow this narrative. We never believe in that. Why? Because the, uh, the target group here, as they, uh, as they propose by their own logic, old government page, is that those women who are affected by who are affected by those, by those narratives. We never believe it. Why? Because every single woman have an empathy towards women. They know how it hurts in status quo to be a woman. That's to say, no thank you. If they see some kind, some kinds of narrative, they will not blindly follow it because everyone wants to have it the best way for, uh, for themselves. That's to say that if they put too much effort on it, if, if, they will, if they suffer and see a lot of pressure as opening government explains, they will get rid of this idea and will not do it. Do it. No thank you. And here is a specification of group which we bring in the which we bring in this debate and why is the most important because not uh, because uh, uh, because in comparison with women those but uh, conservative men in liberal countries never felt okay. uh, never okay. Today I show you that in my world not, more women don't go to sleep completely exhausted at 9 p.m. after a uh, hard day. Instead, they will have energy okay. to go for this and for all rights and all okay. the I, I understand. The understand. I already refuted to it. I don't know why you. But the most important group here is what we bring. Uh, what, what we bring. Why? Because those conservative men are the most in uh, as, as the most uh, as a, is the group which is the most likely to believe the narrative. Why? Because first they never felt themselves as a women. They do not understand the problems of not patriarchal patriarchal women because their mothers, their sisters, and whole their family uh, as whole their family members used to be patriarchal. That's to say that they never felt uh, never felt themselves in, in the society. They never saw the patterns of behavior of, of those women. And when we bring them this this narrative and, and propaganda, they uh, they uh, in comparison with those women are much more likely to believe them and are much
much more and much more likely to uh, much more likely to uh, uh, to ascend to ascend this narrative. What uh, and uh, the, uh, uh, much more likely to uh, be, to, to believe it and, and, and to accept to accept it. That's to say that in, in our position page, the impact on us, the impact on our side of the house is the most important because we overcome the uh, the last resort of resistance in, st in, st in status quo upon those, those women, uh, upon those women, th th their husband, their husband, and, and, and etc. For all these reasons, upon uh, up upon the probabilities, importance, and when we show you the most uh, influential group in this debate, those in opposition wins. Incredibly proud to you. Hi, thank you, for those fine remarks. And everyone for an enjoyable day. Please shake hands and step outside. I said this is a closed round, so there will not be any uh, call given. So please collect your belongings and move out. And. Uh,